Okay, I'm going to teach you um, just a really quick, simple way to make a CD cover for this assignment. Um, first thing that you're going to need to do is collect your text, your images, your background image, um, and then something maybe to use as like a transparent layer. So if you go to Google, I just want to show you something really quick. Um, I'm going to use a Rubik's Cube for my background. And I go to images. You guys have all done this before. Something that I want you to realize is that these images are all different quality and sometimes when you first search something up, um, it's not a very good quality. And it'll tell you over here how big the image is. So this means it's 220 pixels by 210 pixels. Um, generally, that's uh, not a very good resolution. Um, so what you're going to do is go to um, search tools, size, large. Because you want to try and find a larger image of a Rubik's Cube. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one, and you can already tell that it's a lot larger. Um, let me kind of cycle through. I like this one because it's more like a photograph. Um, and you can see right here that it's in the thousands rather than the hundreds. <clears throat> Generally, that's a good indication that it's a good quality image. So I'll go ahead and save image as Rubik's Cube background. Whatever, I misspelled it, but we don't care. Okay. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to want to find my logo for Ratatat. So what I could do is Ratatat um, logo. I'm going to see what pops up. All of these images, which I'm more interested in their um, in their text here than the lion, because that's actually from one of their other albums. So um, I'm going to stick with just this one, which I've already saved to my computer. And then anything else that you think would be interesting that you want to include, um, I actually included this uh, portrait of them as well. And I saved that to my computer already as well. So what we're going to do is go to File, New. And there's something interesting here. There's a bunch of templates already in here for different size things. Um, you can see there's even one for toilet paper if you wanted to make a toilet paper sheet. So I'm going to do CD cover. And this will automatically show you it's going to be um, where are these inches. 4.7 by 4.7 inches. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do file open as layers, all of those things that I made. So I had my Rubik's Cube background. Open that up. So here it showed up in my layers menu. Um, I'll go ahead and file open as layers my Red Tap portrait. File open as layers the Red Tap logo. Okay. So first things. First, um, I have all these things here. I can hide each individual layer to work on one at a time. And for this logo, I don't know what your logo is going to look like. For this one in particular, I can use the magic wand tool, if you remember that last time, or fuzzy select tool. And I can go to select this background and delete it, select these little areas in between and delete it so I have more of just a solid uh, text as, as opposed to that whole background floating behind it. So I got rid of the background. Yours might be a little bit trickier. We'll figure it out. Um, okay, so there I have. Oops, I didn't quite get the whole thing. Because it was hidden. All right, there we go. Select none. All right. So there I have that logo. And I can now open up. Let's see what... Oh my goodness. I know what's happening. So I deleted that color, but I don't know if you guys remember this, where you have to, to make it transparent, you have to go to layer, transparency, add alpha channel. So let me do that again. In Photoshop, you don't have to worry about that. It just automatically knows you want things transparent. But in GIMP, you need to do that. So if you're erasing a background that's not erasing, go to layer, transparency and alpha channel. If this is grayed out, that means you've already done it. Okay, so now I have Rata, I have my Rubik's Cube. I kind of want to re, um, I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer so I don't keep selecting it on accident. Um, I want to resize this Rubik's Cube. So I'm going to scale, get my scale tool. Oh, there it is. Scale. 
Anchor layer. What did I just do? Oh, okay. I don't know what I just scaled. Sorry. Here we go. Don't know what I did. Okay. Now I've got my Rubik's Cube and I'm going to try and fit it a little bit neater in here. Okay, awesome. Very nice. And now this Ratata, I might want to move somewhere else. I'll have to delete that white stuff again. This is a glitchy part of GIMP that is unfortunate. Hey, cat. All right. Select none. Okay, so there we go. I have Rubik's Cube, Ratatat, and then let's open up this this layer. And I also want to get rid of that background behind them too. Let's see if this layer of their portrait needs a transparency layer. It does. I'll add alpha, alpha channel. Um, use my fuzzy select tool. And it's selecting too much of their shirt here, so maybe I have to go around and lasso it which you guys have done before with other assignments. So you're kind of familiar with this already. I think it's that the infinity assignment you guys had to use this lasso tool. And I'm doing a real hack job of this because I'm trying to do this quickly for you. So you get the idea. really hack job. Okay, double click to end it. Alright, I'm going to go to edit cut. Maybe I'll just go ahead and delete this layer then. Select none. And I'm going to make a new layer and try to paste those guys right in there. There they are. Perfect. I just did um, control V on my, or sorry, a control P for and V for copy paste in there. Um, come on, cat. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now I'm going to put these guys in here. Remember how I said you have to have a transparency layer. So um, what I'm going to do here is whenever you copy and paste something, it shows up as a floating section. Um, just kind of solidify by saying anchor layer. So now it's there. And now I have my three different layers. But I want to play around with transparency. So I think these guys, I'm going to, first of all, I want to scale them a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to just play around with opacity right on this layer. And change that maybe to 50 and see what happens. And now I'm getting somewhat interesting. I'm thinking composition-wise, there's a lot of space above this area. Um, I'm thinking maybe if I move these guys and uh, potentially rotate them upside down, that might be kind of fun. And move them down here. Oops. All right. I am by no means saying that uh, this is the best <laughs> the best album cover, but hopefully I gave you some quick run through of how you can make your own and make it interesting. So to do this, I use the fuzzy select tool. I use the scaling tool a lot. I use the rotating tool. Um, I used I deleted backgrounds in order to do that. You have to and make things transparent. You have to go to layer transparency add alpha channel on each background that you're, or each layer that you're using. Um, you could end up having 6, 10, 15 layers over here and that's fine. I just did the bare minimum. So have fun with this. Enjoy it and I'm sorry about my cat.